Hi there folks, Rob Pauline for New Generation FX. Welcome to Trader's Blog for July 9th, 2013. I'm going to talk today guys about trade management. I had a lot of requests about trade management. My thoughts and can I uh, hand over any ideas. So let's cover off a few things in this video. Uh, largely my theories, of course, on trade management. And uh, hopefully you guys can pick up a little bit from it. And uh, feel free to feed back to me what, what you're doing with your trade management and, and what seems to be working also. But here's my thoughts. Um, there's three main things I think we want to discuss. And then I'll give a little demonstration of, of what I like to, or how I like to, to manage my trades personally. Um, three things you've got to consider, of course, is the, main, the first one is the type of trade you're taking. Now, if you're a scalper or a spot trader or a swing trader, there's going to be different sorts of trade management techniques. So obviously, a scalper is going to be taking profit or trailing a lot, a lot more than than the others. And then there's the other extreme, which is like your swing and position traders, my style of trading, where you might be lucky to move a stop once a day, if not every few days, that sort of thing. The second point is whether you're a profit taker or a profit trailer. I'm a profit trailer. I don't like to take profit. I have this theory that if you're in a good trade, why should you get out of it? And I find to get in that good trade where you've had a little luck go your way, some big money's going the same way, you've picked direction, and maybe there's some fundamentals that kicked in, why would you want to get out of that trade? You might be in the next big move for the next several weeks or months, and uh, you want to make sure you stay in that trade to, to maximize your profit. So I'm a profit trailer I'm always going to let price knock me out versus just take profit and another another reason why I'm a, a, a profit trailer is I've done a lot of testing a lot of simulate trading simulation of years and years of data across many many pairs and I've tried many different ways of trade management and I've I've tried the profit trailing and I've tried the profit taking and trying to get back in the trade and I really did feel more comfortable just trailing profit. I found that when I got took profit, quite often the trade just kept going and didn't give me an opportunity to get back in and just went for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pips. So I'm sitting there on the sidelines. I got out of the trade. I'm no longer in the trade. And suddenly I'm not profiting. And the other thing is I've taken profit in these trades. And then when I've tried to get back in, I've taken losses or break-evens or gone through a whole lot of frustration trying to find out where I'm going to get back in. And I really think it's just too too much hard work. I really think it's just way easier just to, to trail until until you get knocked out of the trade. Um, also, I found like if you looked at, I remember taking two years worth of Aussie data, two thousand and I think it was 2011 and 2012, and when I trailed profit, I I made more than when I was a profit taker, and I had a better winning percentage, and I took less trades. So to me, that was sort of a win-win-win situation. And uh, since all that testing went down, I've pretty much just stuck with, with profit trailing. And the third point is basically what your personal emotions can withstand. I understand that we're all wired differently. I personally like getting in these big trades and being up, you know, the more pips the better and just trailing and trailing and it's just an easy job. And I get a real sort of, you know, a real kick for me now in trading is, because I don't sit and stare at charts all day every day, is getting, you know, how much, how many pips can I make and seeing your, your account just, you know, piling up and piling up and just moving, moving stops and moving stops. To me, that's the... That's what trading's all about. It's making lots and lots of pips, right? Not necessarily sitting there trying to analyze. So some of us are happy to let things go and just trail and trail and trail. And that means sometimes that you're up hundreds and hundreds of pips and suddenly you're not up hundreds and hundreds of pips. Some of us need to make some money and get out. Might have had a bad, bad week or two. Feel like you're better off taking some money off the table. It's completely up to yourself. It, you've got to take it. Really, you can't you can't take my personal situation and say, oh, I'm going to trade like Rob. It might not work for your personal emotions. If you're a little bit of a, 
you know, if you're that type of person that needs to get in at London and get out at New York, that's just the way you are. Okay. It's about, it's, it's, it probably comes back to how much risk you're willing to take. And there's that, and definitely in trading, there's that positive correlation between risk and profit. I'm willing to take a lot of risk to make a lot of profit. Now, by risk, I'm not like losing money. I'm talking trade management, which means, you know, I'll quite often be up 150 pips and take a break even. Because I'm, what I'm risking is I'm going for like five, 600 pips. Now, I could have taken, I could have got out 150 pips profit and been all good. But that's just, that's just the risk that I'm willing to take. Okay, I don't get emotionally distraught if I take a break even. So, at the end of the day, guys, just remember there's no perfect way to trade. Like anything else, trade management is, there's no perfect way. It's something that I personally will always be searching for better ways to do. But what I will say is trade management is definitely more of an area where you guys should be focusing versus ex execution. In my previous blog post on execution, trade entries, I, I mentioned this. Money is to be made in management. Managing the trade, not executing it. So this is where you definitely got to put the focus. Up on the screen here is a pound dollar, and it's for, I'm going to go back, scooch back to start of the trading year. And I'm going to explain a couple of things and how I would, this is how I would generally trade, okay? And then I'm going to give you a little bit of an example of bringing some uh, sort of bias and fundamental. Okay, so here's a, I'm putting a circle. I actually took this trade earlier right at the start of the year it was a beauty because it's actually on holiday and basically the it just went and went and went and the holiday was you know during the holiday didn't even have to really manage it during the holiday so it was really good basically break price broken down pull back and off we go and the way I way I generally trade or trade manage I should say is once I'm in a trade I'm basically just trailing four hours like this, just moving a stop. Okay, so if you're in somewhere up here, you're probably in this, you know, for a cup, a good couple of weeks, and that is exactly the way I want to trade. You know, if I can move my stop once a day, once every few days, to me that's heaven. Now there's a little. Um, let me pass on some personal uh, ways I'm, I manage. What I actually do is I will make some a few changes in my in my management style if I believe that we have a good enough fundamental change in bias. Now I'm no fundamental trader. If anyone's followed me before or heard me talk, I'm no fundamentalist at all. But what my theory is, is if if you follow long-term time frames like four-hour daily charts, those sorts of time frames like I do, when you see a major change of trend in, say, a daily chart or a four-hour chart, you could assume that that is a fundamental change of bias. Because for a daily, a daily change of trend to really, you, and I'm talking price action here, for a daily change of trend to really be a change of trend it can take weeks so that's weeks of a lot of money changing their bias from being maybe bullish to bearish okay so you know for example we've been up here for one two three four you know, five weeks and suddenly after this high up here a lot of the people that were buying have now been knocked out of trades and we come down we pull back and we break new lower you know major lower lows over the next few weeks you know I'll consider that a fundamental change in bias so if I'm if I'm able to enter a trade on a on a fundamental change of bias 
I'm going to same trade, but it's you know fundamentally I think it's a change of bias. I'm gonna really give it room to breathe and I'm I'm likely just to move my stop once or twice because I'm I wanna see if I can ride out the the attempt at making new lows or new high, uh, you know, attempt at finding support and a new uptrend forming. And if I can see out that and then move my, I'm just going to move my stop, move my stop. So, so basically what I'm saying is I'm going to let, I'm going to let it really go up. If we just sort of just do a quick calculation, I'm going to let this thing go up probably 400 pips and I'm going to have my stop like 100 pips, you know, 300 pips up the road. So I'm going to be up 400 pips and then I'm only going to be up like 200 pips. But I'm willing to do that to really let it breathe and go somewhere. And as you can see, once you've found fundamental direction, you can just move a stop and just keep moving a stop and just keep moving and just keep moving and just keep moving until you get knocked out and then you can maybe just you get a new change of trend and you can just go in the next direction so that's that's basically how I I trade I just trail and trail and trail until it doesn't wanna be trailed anymore I don't take profit I just will sit there and just move a stop and move a stop and move a stop and for me and my the way the types of trades I take, which is more swing and position trade, I'm happy with my emotions th this way because I, I like to, you know, for me, um, emotions are, in trading are all about having lots of pips in your trading account, not sitting there analyzing, trying to get in and get out and get in and get out. That, that just, for my emotions, doesn't work. Okay, so you've got to do something that works for your emotions. And... Yeah, it comes back to the types of trade you're taking. And so I, I highly recommend anyone who's particularly doing these types of swing trades and position trades. And if you're someone who's trying to trade and you have a busy job and you've got a family and you're busy social life and you, but you, you're still interested in trading, I highly recommend swing and position type trading. So planning off four hour and daily charts and those sorts of things. And once you once you get in a direction, just being a, a profit trailer and not a profit taker. And so you might have a really busy job working 12 hours a day, but you can always find five minutes to move a stop. And that's all you do once you get in a trend. And these happen regularly. You'll be surprised. And if you do it across enough pairs, you know, usually it's going to be a USD is going to move or a yen is going to move, or you might have a couple of exotic cross pairs. They can trend and trend and trend. And to me, that's what it's all about, trading trends and, and riding that trend for as long as possible. Okay, that's it for this entry in the blog, guys. Next entry later in the week will be on the things that improved for me over the last 12 months. I've mentioned in the blog intro video that I did a few weeks back that in the last 12 months, I've probably learned more about trading than I have in the last five years. And I'm going to write up a little blog about it, so... Hopefully you guys will read it and pick something up. If you want anything, uh, me to blog on anything else, guys, anything you're, you're dealing with personally in your trading, maybe it could be problems with psychology or emotions or trade execution or anything, just um, let us know. The social media contact details are on the end of the video. Have yourselves a good trading week and we'll talk to you later. Cheers.